Hello students, welcome back. Now we have our unit, unit six, which we started. We had the reading lesson in the last class. Now in the reading lesson, generally we talked about the title here or the topic in general, which is do men and women speak the same language? Now we had a very interesting topic here. Now there were lots of ideas. So just to revise the ideas, we have the first one, the differences between men and women purpose of communication, how men communicate, the content of what males and females talk about exploring problems, the way they listen, how the brain is structured and wired, raising impact, and a balance. So we have here the ideas in the reading topic that we had, which was, of course, basically about communication. So talking about communication here, we have this question. How do we communicate? Have you ever thought clearly about how we communicate between each other? Now, we know that there are ways to communicate with each other. We can understand each other even if we are not talking. So here we are going to focus on the ways that people can communicate with each other without even speaking. So here we have the question, think about different ways people can communicate. Now when we look at this map here, you can see that we have other ways. Now we can say that we have formal and informal, oral and written, internal and external, verbal and nonverbal. So here you can see that we have many ways to communicate and we have lots of topics that we can talk about. To understand more, let's just watch this video. Now when you see this person, when we just observe his facial expressions and how he is talking, he is using his hands. Can we listen to him? Can we understand what he is saying? No but we can understand in general that he is serious, he is talking about something, and he is trying to explain something to someone else. In this other video, we have also this man here. Now we can see from the, his facial expressions, of course he looks very serious, and you can see that he is approving something. We understand that he is approving. He is using his facial uh, expressions. He is using other gestures like his hands. Also, he is nodding. So all of these are ways to understand the conversation without even listening. Now, do we mostly communicate through verbal or nonverbal language? So we have seen the two videos here and we can see that there is a way to communicate which is non-verbal language and of course we have the verbal language that we use while we are speaking to other people or talking. Try communicating these without speaking. So we have in the book mentioned, can I have your pen please? Try to communicate and ask for a pen without even speaking. Are you going to call me after school? I went shopping yesterday. Now write two of your own messages on a piece of paper, fold it and set it aside or give it to someone. Use nonverbal language to communicate your message. Check how successful were you? Now we do have this exercise which is on page number 20 in your book. You can apply, you can have this kind of activity with a classmate, with a friend, or even a member of the family. Now moving on, we are going to talk about, or we are actually going to write about verbal and nonverbal communication. We have our writing class for the day. Our objectives for the day are to compare between verbal and nonverbal communication state the characteristics of nonverbal communication, scan for information and topic sentences, give a personal point of view about the types of communication, differentiate between types of essays, and the last objective to organize ideas to write a new essay. Now we are going to open your books. Please open your books on page number 90. 
On page number 90, we have the instructions to read the text and find the main thesis statement, the supporting paragraphs, and the arguments used. So we have the complete paragraph or the passage here. We are asked first to read the text and find the main thesis statement. So we have applied this activity before and we do know that the main thesis statement will be at the very beginning. Now we have here the first paragraph, which is the main part, or we can say the introduction. Then we have another instruction here to read the text and find the supporting paragraphs. So when you take a look in your book, you can find that we have here, this is two, the third paragraph, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. So actually we have the main paragraph here or the introduction, and we do have one, two, three, four, five paragraphs to support the idea. Now after that we have here to read the text and find the arguments used. So actually we are going to see what are the types of arguments that we have here in the passage. Now we have read the text and find the main thesis statement. We are going to just focus on the first paragraph here. And when we read here, you can find that we have here very clearly the main thesis statement is going to be language is our primary means of communication as human beings, which sets us apart from other species. So what makes us different from other species that we have here language as a way to communicate. Now we have here the basic idea that we are going to focus on. We have here the second part to read the text and find the arguments used also. So we're going to start with the other five paragraphs looking for the arguments. Now when you have an argument here, you are trying to prove an idea. So just scan the paragraph here and you can find very clearly that we have here the argument is try describing the picture and everything you have identified in it to your friend or write about it. How long do you think it's going to take you? Certainly a lot longer than it takes a photo to convey the same amount of information. So here they are saying or the writer here is saying to you or asking you to try something as a way to prove his point of view. So we have here this is going to be the argument in the second paragraph. In number three, we can see that the argument is, suppose that you have just acquired the latest electronic gadget. Would you choose to tell your friend about it or show it to him or her? Now, this is another way to prove a point that something is better than another thing. So when I am talking about my new gadget or a new device here, it is much better to show a person. Do you think or do you agree that it is better or just to talk about it? We have the argument in number four. You can scan quickly and you can find that we have here the idea in number four is to look at the very beginning here. We have, however, there are situations where a different type of interaction is required. So yes, we are agreeing or we do agree that sometimes some situations there is a kind or a type of different interaction that is required. And we can see that we have here in this part, which is number five. Before we read, we can just imagine here. Imagine yourself in this situation. Now just imagine that you are in an airport you are on an escalator and there is someone you know, you discovered that the other person is on the other side of the escalator. Would you shout or talk loudly, although you are in a very noisy place, or would you try to use another way to communicate? Now, would you try to use a non-verbal action here? This is the point that we have here in the fifth paragraph. The argument is, on a partly different note, you see a friend you have not seen for some time at a distance. Now you'd probably resort to gesturing by holding your hand as a way to contact someone as if you are talking to him on the phone. So we have here, this is the argument in number five. We do have in number six, the argument. 
as studies have shown, about 60% of human communication is carried out through nonverbal means, for example, facial expression, gestures, or illustration. So you can see that we do have a very strong argument in this paragraph. Why? Because it depends on what is stated based on social, or here we have studies. So these studies do uh, apply that we have here 60% of human communication is carried out through nonverbal means. So we do have the paragraph in general, it is about, or the paragraphs or the passage in general, it is about verbal and nonverbal communication and how people, they do understand each other even though sometimes they don't need even to speak. Now it is your turn. We have here on page number 91. We are going to go to our task here or the assignment. So what is our assignment? Now just to focus, we have the idea of communication in general. We are asked in the book to think of an Arab man or a woman and a non-Arab man or a woman you know personally or from TV. So here you are going to choose two people. They can be an Arab and then a non-Arab, they can be both Arabs, they can be both non-Arabs, so it depends on your choice. Now what are we going to do about them? We have here number two. Think about the way these people communicate. So here you know why the book is asking us to choose someone who is non-Arab because we have so two people that they do not understand each other, uh, but the question here can they communicate with each other or not? So going back to number two here, we have here to think about the way these people communicate. Research and collect information about culture-specific features of communication. Do you think they communicate in a way that a typical or is typical of their culture? Write your idea in a chart. So what are we going to do? We are going to think about, or you are going to think about two people, two figures, they can be well known, they can be, uh, or you can personally know them. You are going to compare between them and you are going to try to describe how do these two people communicate with each other. Now, for example, have you ever heard about student exchange programs or programs that team up schools from different countries? Students who are involved in such projects require online communication. So have you tried something like that? Now some schools, they do contact other people or other students in another country, in another school. They can uh, be foreigners or nat uh, native speakers of English. And there is a way to communicate with these people. So you can communicate with a school in Europe, for example, or in America or in any other part of the world. So once you have the idea that you are communicating with someone who is not the same culture, you will be able to write or describe what is the way to communicate with these people. They are given the opportunity to find out about other cultures and this is the basic part that we are being uh, or we are studying the other culture or we are getting to know something else besides our own culture. So we have here, they are given the opportunity to find out about other cultures on a personal basis beyond national stereotypes. Now, for example, they have in the book a kind of comparison between a friend from Sweden and a friend from Poland, which is on page num number 91. We are going to do the same here, and we are going to write an essay about the communication approaches used by each person. So we have these two people. We are going to describe each person here. How do they communicate? What are the communication approaches? Give examples to support your ideas. So when we said that we have here two people, we are going to write an essay about each person and how does this person communicate. We are actually comparing. So we are going to write a comparative essay. Now, you do know that before we had the expository essay and we also have written the persuasive essay in our previous units. So now we are going to concentrate on the comparative essay. 
So just to remind you here, you can see that we have here the expository essay. We said that it is explanatory, descriptive, and describing. We have the persuasive essay, which means that there is a personal argument. There are other points of views or different views that are considered, and we are going to start now with our third type of essay, which is the comparative essay. Now, in the comparative essay here, you are going to explain how two subjects are either similar or different. So we are going to concentrate and we are going to focus on the comparative essay form. So we are going to pass by the tips that we have as usual in each unit. We have our writing tips. Now when you write a comparative or a contrastive essay here, we have here to consider the different sides, sides of the issue, to develop a list of similarities and differences. So you are going to compare, but you do know, do have to just show the similarities and differences that we have here. And we have to establish the basis for comparison. Now you are going to mention the two people, and then you are going to start the comparison here. So the first part is to establish the comparison, to create a thesis for the relative importance now, this means to mention the similarities, outweigh differences. Now, structure your essay using an alternate, alternating or a block structure. So we're going to just explain what does this point mean. Now, let's just start from the very beginning. We are going to choose two figures, as we have mentioned from the very beginning, that we are going to choose either an Arab and a non-Arab, they can be from two different cultures here. Now, once you have chosen these two people, you are going to concentrate on how these two people communicate with each other. But you do know that you have to establish at the very beginning the thesis that we have, and then you're going to start the comparison. So just to move on here, we have an example. Now, I have chosen these two young ladies. Now, I have Noor, who is non-Arab, she is from Europe. And also I have Sara, who is also non-Arab, but she is from Asia. So I'm going to compare between these two girls. I'm going to use the table that we have here. Now I am asked to use these uh, instructions that we have here. We have the non-Arab person's name and the non-Arab person's name. And then I have something about the culture specific communication features, and we do have the communication features that are non-culture specific. So what does that mean? We are going to see what we have here. Now I'm going to just write their names. We have here Noor and Sara. We have at the very beginning the culture specific communication, which means there are different cultures. Now one is from Europe and the other is from Asia. So it is normal that each country has a different culture, and we are going to describe something about their culture. On the other hand, we have the other part, which is communication features that are non-culture or not culture specific. Now we can choose something personal or social. We can put also in mind that we have here a way to describe gestures and facial expressions to just combine with the idea that we have here in the book, which is verbal and nonverbal language. So moving on here, as I have here, I am going to show the similarities and the differences. We have discussed the differences, but I am also going to write something similar or write something to join them together. I can you say, for example, that they get along very well, and I'm going to prove how. So we have here our notes. You do need to write some notes here just to start. Now, for example, we can use a table. For example, like here, we have Noor and Sara. I can start with comparing. Very simply, I can say that Noor is outgoing. Sara is a silent person. Noor is European. Sara is Asian. We have here Noor is social. But on the other hand, we have Sara, who is a shy person. Noor is from a conservative background or an environment, and we're going to explain how or why. And we have here Sara, her uh, society is a little bit more open. Also, I'm going to show why. 
Now here we have some ideas. You can, of course, add more ideas, more words, as long as you are thinking about the differences between the two people that you have chosen. But do put in mind that you are going to mention their personalities, their backgrounds, and cultures. Now, I am going to give examples, or at least one main example, to prove the difference between the two girls here. I am also going to link between them and show how they are going to communicate. And we have here also, I am going to compare in general between their personalities. So I have my ideas here, and I do know that I am going to compare between them in my comparative essay. So we have the structure in the book. We are back to the book. We have here, structure your essay using an alternating or a block structure. So what does that mean? Now we have here, first of all, A. An alternating structure involves a point-by-point -point discussion and can be quite systematic. And we have here, an article. We have here, B, a block method all allows you to discuss each aspect or topic in distinct blocks and then conclude. Here you can see that we have here a more clear idea about it. We have here the alternative structure requires focus on a feature. You are talking about one specific feature. For example, greetings between men in the different cultures, followed by a focus on another feature such as gestures of approval and a comparison or a contrast in different cultures and so on. So in the first method, we are concentrating on one feature, but we do have the other method, which is the block method, would call for a discussion of all relevant features. You are giving a main idea about a lot or many points together, many features in one culture, for example, followed by a discussion of the same features in the other culture. The final part would require students to compare, contrast, and conclude. Now here you can see that I have more points. I said that I'm going to compare between the two young ladies here, Sara and Nada. I have my complete essay here. Now from the very beginning, we have the introduction or the thesis paragraph. We have the main idea. Then you can see that I have two paragraphs, which are the body. And I have a very short paragraph at the end or a sentence that is going to be the conclusion or the closing paragraph that we have here. Now, just to focus, we are going to go back and we are going to see, did I use the methods that we have mentioned or not? Now we have here the first paragraph. This is my own paragraph or the own essay, but I have the first paragraph mentioned now, at the very beginning, I wrote, communication is an essential part of people's lives. Now, here you can see that this is the thesis statement because I am giving you from the very start what is the whole essay about. So, I am talking about communication. Everyone communicates either by spoken language or non-verbal actions and symbols. We can actually communicate without even speaking the same language using nonverbal actions and gestures. This is a topic that reminds me of two colleagues I know very well. Now, from this part, you know that I am starting to compare or mentioning at least the two people that I am going to compare. They are both non-Arabs. This is something that they have similar. Noor is European and Sara is from Asia. Although they don't speak the same language, they get along very well. So this is the first paragraph or the thesis. Now moving on, we have the rest of the essay here. We have from the second paragraph here, it is interesting to know things about them. Noor is social and outgoing, unlike Sara, who is mostly shy and rather a silent person. So you can see that I used some of the words that I have in my notes. Noor is talkative and very easy to talk to. Sara, on the other hand, is cautious but comfortable to talk to as well. So here we have the block method because we are mentioning more than one point here in our paragraph. We have the third. Their cultures are different. 
but in an interesting way. Noor's culture is conservative and they avoid eye contact, which is considered disrespectful, as well as crossing legs. It is interesting to know that shaking their heads is a way to say yes. On the other hand, Sara's culture is more open and accepts intimacy gestures. Eye contact is a matter, or as a matter of fact, a respect gesture. Unlike Noor's culture, shaking heads is our typical no. So here you can see that there is a very clear comparison between the two cultures that Noor and Sara have. I have compared between them, I have compared between their personalities and also between their cultures. At the very end, we have the closing part we have here. Although they do have their differences, that doesn't stop them from communicating very well. Now we have proved all the points that we have in the lesson, which is about comparison, or we have your comparative essay. Now you can do the same. So you are going to start by choosing two people, writing your notes about them, and start comparing. Now we have, as we mentioned, we have mentioned before the checklist of evaluation. Now this is a way just to make sure that your essay is on the, the uh, correct track. You can check your title, the ideas, the spelling, the structure, make sure of your handwriting or you are choosing the correct font or something comfortable to read, your punctuation and capital letters, and at the very end your writing will be perfect. So at the very end of our lesson, our outline of the day, we have discussed types of communication. We read and searched about the main ideas that we have here, the arguments that are mentioned in the paragraphs. We highlighted also the arguments and we organized writing steps. Now you do know how to start your writing. First of all, by using your charts, you are going to choose your ideas. Don't forget your notes. And at the very end, you will have the perfect essay. So don't forget to start your assignment and thinking about these two figures. And we are going to mention them, inshallah, in our next lesson. So be ready.